first legal analysis from Judge Janine Pirro, co-host of The Five. Uh, Judge Janine, great to have you here today. You know, so, you know, a day into this, you look at it and you go, well, what's he doing? Does he, is there a method to this madness or is it just madness? You know, a day into it, you wake up and you say, you know, maybe I missed something. And then you look at the indictment again and you say, no, he missed something. He would not, that means DA Alvin Bragg, would not identify this second crime. Why? Why not illuminate what it is? Why not prosecute it on its own? Why hide it from the rest of us? What is he afraid of? And when he is asked the question directly, he comes back with, well, you know, we've got more testimony and it could be the New York state election law. He doesn't reference a federal crime. So what we have here is, a, is, is an indictment that for the most, I think the first 20 counts are beyond the statute of limitations on its face. Fa facially, this is insufficient. Factually, it is insufficient. We need a bill of particulars to tell us what it is. So what I'm thinking in my mind is like everyone else, and this is what I did for a living. This is my wheelhouse for 32 years. What I'm thinking is there's got to be a reason for him not to identify it. Is it because maybe he's worried about the sufficiency of the indictment? And if he doesn't really identify it, maybe then Georgia could continue to prosecute that crime and not have it be barred on the basis of double jeopardy? I don't know. But what I do know is that the stuff that everyone admits to, on the left, on the right, in the middle, and the agnostics, is that this is a piece of garbage. It means nothing. And to drag a president, a former president of the United States, into the bowels of the criminal courts in New York City is a horrendous act. Unless you have something at least identifiable, you cannot do that. Plus, I haven't even gotten into the issue of intent. How are you going to show what Donald Trump's intent was, former President Trump? This is a bookkeeping offense. We don't bring presidents down on that kind of thing. But the amazing thing is, when you've got one party indicting another party, and this is Mark and Kellyanne's milieu, uh, it stinks to high heaven even in a criminal courtroom. So here's what he said yesterday, Alvin Bragg, when he was asked, you know, your predecessors turned this, this down. So why are you basically putting your whole professional career out here on a limb on this thing? Watch this. Your predecessor took a hard look at this case and decided not to charge it. Federal prosecutors took a hard look at this case and decided not to charge it. Do you believe you have new evidence that led you to decide to charge this? Or why now? Well, as I, as I just mentioned, we have uh, had available to the office additional evidence uh, that was not in the office's possession prior to my time here. Does he look confident to you in that? Not at all. I didn't think so the, either. The fact that he doesn't identify directly, you know, you have to think back, what is new? The only thing that happened recently is they brought back David Pecker from AMI after Bob Costello, the attorney, who right. said Michael Cohen, who is at the heart of this case, I don't even need to go back there, that you could try to prosecute a former president on the grounds uh, and the, on the credibility of a perjurer who has perjured himself to Congress in courtrooms mm -hmm. is, is, is beyond what any of us in the criminal justice have said system have seen. This is an embarrassment. He wants to be the first. I can't say if that's the reason, but there's no other reason for this. This is not a case to prosecute, but I'll tell you what it does do. What it does do is it identifies that this is a man who, as he said last night, is a man who has been hunted for six years, seven years, and this flimsy indictment, which is nothing more than a piece of paper, is the cream on top of the cake that fizzles in everyone's mind. So, you know, the question of, of federal election law, right, I mean, is also raised by this case because there's an impact on running for president right. with this indictment around you as well. So is that a violation of federal election law? This could be a violation of federal election law. Let's assume it is. He doesn't have the jurisdiction to try it. I was a district attorney. 
If I called the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York and said, hey, it's Janine, don't worry about it. I got this federal crime covered. They'd come and indict me for something. Yeah. I mean, you, that's not done. Everything as it relates to Donald Trump is outside the rules. This, this Justice Merchant, um, what's your read on him? Because he was uh, in the read through and in the reporting respectful of yes. the former president in, in that room yesterday. I mean, he has an opportunity here. He could say, you know what? It's too light. There's not enough here for what you're doing. The, the, the magnitude of this is too large and you don't have the stuff. Willie? Well, not now, but there will be a time to make motions. Uh, and I thought that he was very calm yesterday. And the fact that he did not issue a gag order, which would have been found mm -hmm. unconstitutional, uh, I think he may be worried, too, based upon his reaction and his experience yeah. previously, where Bragg thought he had the right judge. Absolutely. And he's had two successful prosecutions right. of Trump organization. So right. does he really want this on his record if he doesn't have the confidence in what Bragg has brought to him? He has that opportunity. So great we'll question. Um, Justice, thank you so much. You're great welcome. to see you. Judge Jeanine Pirro, always good to have you with us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.